It has been three plus years ever since the release of The Rise of Skywalker and when the sequel trilogy came to an official close by J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy. Now, given that there's a lot of things happening between, of course, Bob Iger and the Disney executives and their shakeup, they really have been trying to course correct the franchise ever since the sequels came to an end and realized that the fans remained divided ever since then. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. Now, yes, J.J. Abrams has been, you know, always refusing to come back to Star Wars. He wants nothing to do with it ever again. And it's really hard to really, you know, kind of put an idea to exactly why. It most likely has a lot to do with how Kathleen Kennedy was really telling J.J. and forcing him to do certain things that he did not want to do. He opened up about this a couple of months ago, about what he did not want to do with Episode 9. And the latest has to do with Emperor Palpatine and something that not all fans really came to realize. And this is something that J.J. is not proud of. It's something that he did not want to do. And let's m clarify here. This is something that Kathleen Kennedy came up with herself that she actually wanted to put in the movie. So given that J.J. Abrams really has had, you know, his run with Star Wars, he does not want to return to a TV show or a movie at that, and sure, you know, we've seen this with, you know, other creators before in the past where they say, no more, I'm done, and then they just come back. Who knows if JJ's like that or not. But what he was able to say recently wasn't really the nicest thing to say to Kathleen Kennedy and really begins to come out and be honest about what he thought about one of Kathy's ideas that he actually labeled as a terrible mistake in episode 9. Let's dive into it. Now, with J.J. never wanting to return to the Star Wars franchise, he went on to talk more about one of his worst experiences with The Rise of Skywalker. J.J. went on to state the following, One of my biggest mishaps I had with Episode 9 was how Kathy kept on insisting that Palpatine's clothes would change after he was rejuvenated from transferring Ben and Rey's life force to his host body. I thought it was ridiculous and just flat out, um, wrong. But she felt Palpatine's clothes should change after he transformed to use as symbolism of his newfound powers and health. I'm actually quite happy that not many fans noticed this. Well, um, maybe not so much now that I'm talking about this. And yeah, but yeah, it was one of those things that I had an argument about with Kathy. And I kept insisting myself that this was just something straight out of a cartoon. I kept questioning myself, okay, so how would Palpatine's clothes really change? Is he force projecting his clothing? I mean, what's to say he's not, I guess, if Ryan had Luke project his whole body, but I don't know, it was just reaching and grasping for straws. They made a mistake and we had to live with it. They thought it was a good idea, I did not. It's one of those things I don't like about what I had to film for this movie because it just made no sense. Now, let me just stop right here about what JJ is saying before I get to the next big piece of what he has to elaborate on. Now, I don't know if you all noticed, <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of you did. Uh, according to JJ, though, not a lot of people did notice this. Uh, basically, before he rejuvenates himself, Palpatine has his traditional robes, all right? Just flat, black, black decked out robes. That was it. But when he rejuvenates, you notice that he's got like the red um, undershirt or the undergarment underneath his robe along with the sleeves turning red out of nowhere. It's a completely different outfit. It's a completely different costume. And it's something that even I didn't realize at first when I saw this in the theaters. At first I was like, okay, you know, you were subconsciously thinking, all right, that's cool. But you weren't logically thinking about anything like until after you saw it, maybe a second time. At least that's how long it took for me. I don't know about you, but JJ does not like how Kathleen Kennedy is the one who pressed him to do this. She literally felt that this was a good decision or a good way to portray how sinister Palpatine becomes after he harnesses Ray and Ben's power. Again, nothing about this was explained in the novelization, nor any kind of books out there or commentary. It was just one of the biggest movie mistakes in Episode 9, and perhaps even in Star Wars as a whole. The fact that Palpatine's clothing changes after he rejuvenates. Not only does J.J. Abrams hate this, a lot of fans that noticed this thought it was just insane, and not in a good way. So, 
Kathleen Kennedy is the one who pressed this on him, told him to do this, and I kind of find it funny that J.J. Abrams is trying to kind of create a logical reason as to why this was happening. He even went as far to say that maybe he was force projecting his clothing. I have to kind of laugh at that, but when you look at stuff like this, this is the type of thing that makes you realize that Kathleen Kennedy does not understand Star Wars. She just does not. The Force doesn't work like that, at least in the current state. You can't just have a character change clothing like that. It just seems a little odd. Uh, even JJ said and felt that it felt like a cartoon doing something like that, but I digress. He goes on to elaborate and conclude, maybe an author or somebody will make sense of that someday. I mean, I hope so. But this was Kathy's idea and I just didn't know how to react to that all. Even Ian brought this up to me and was like, wait, how is this happening? Are the fans going to get mad about this? Is this the right thing to do? And look, I get what Ian said. It really was something that made no sense from Kathy, but I respected her vision at the time and just had to do what I was told to do, so there is that. But no other than that, I have no big regrets with how I handle Palpatine's visuals. It was the thrill of a lifetime to work with Ian McDermott. And again, I mean, I'm happy for Ian. I'm glad that he came back. I'm glad, I'm glad that the guy got, you know, work. That he was able to come back into Star Wars after so many years, since like 2005. It was great, you know, it was great to see him, even though I still disagree that Palpatine, you know, was the answer to bring him back as a new villain. Um, you know, when you think about it this way, right? The real reason why Palpatine came back too was all because of Kathleen Kennedy. It was basically a last minute or a last ditch effort to get a proper villain on board. They killed off Snoke. They didn't know what to do in episode nine because they knew Ben Solo was gonna turn to the light. Who was gonna be the villain? Right? They needed somebody, and at first it was Tor Valum, they X'd him out, then they got Palpatine. So, yeah, it is a very interesting thing, though, that JJ points out here, that he really brings up, I'm kind of surprised that he's finally bringing this up, about the clothing change. I mean, it just really doesn't make sense to me, even as a fan. I mean, when you look at that scenario, it just did not really kind of work well when you examine the footage, you know. One could argue, like, maybe when he harnessed Ben and Ray's life force that maybe like his clothing kind of shifted around a little bit, but no, it's a totally different outfit, totally different costume. Uh, Ian McDermott admitted to it, J.J. Abrams admitted to it, they didn't like this idea by Kathy, and there's that, like he said. So, anyways, the thing about episode 9 right now is that there is a Ray movie on board by Stephen Knight, it's gonna basically be a sequel to episode 9, and it's gonna take place 15 years later, and a lot of fans have a lot of mixed emotions about this. You know, you're gonna see a lot of fans expressing a lot of, you know, hate toward this movie or support. So it's all a matter of if you like the character of Rey or not, or if fans are willing to give Rey another shot or not. You know, that's really where the current state of this Rey movie really is right now. So anyways, guys, I would love to hear your opinion on JJ, what he thinks about this and what Kathleen Kennedy did. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time.